Thank God, amen, for the blood. What can wash away my sin? The songwriter said, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There ain't no righteousness in us. Thank God there was righteousness in God. Thank God God died for our sins. Amen. Appreciate that tonight. Amen. Anybody got a testimony? Amen, sis. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Saved and washed in the blood, and she's got a husband that's handsome and debonair. I think that's what he said in Sunday school, amen. I don't know. She wasn't here, so I wouldn't let her know, amen. Go ahead, sis. Amen, sis. Thank you, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 God knows how to make a change, don't he? Amen. He makes the difference. Amen. amen. She lost her grandmother today. Keep their, them in prayer there. Amen. Amen. Thank God he can comfort no matter what the need is, can he? Amen. amen. He is faithful. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. He's the daysman. He's our mediator. Amen. Between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And he's God on top of it. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. That's good. Amen. 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 Thank God he sees you through, don't he? never know what we'll have to go through on this side, but thank God God's faithful no matter what it is. Right. Even when it's dark, God's still there, ain't he? And there are some dark valleys, amen, but thank God he's faithful. Joseph praising the Lord, amen. Amen, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. Amen. Thank God he can carry our burdens. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. It gets heavy sometimes. Thank God he gives the relief, amen. We don't have to carry it. We can cast it on the Lord because he cares for us. He says to bring them to him, don't he, amen. All right. Anybody else? I know that's a little brook. I can hear her voice, but I can't find her. Oh, she's hiding behind John's big head. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Brook, Brook. I asked her today. She was over there uh, laying up on Brother Jeff, and I said, Are you daddy's girl? She said, Yeah. I said, I like it, girl. Amen. Daddy's girl. Smart girl. Always be daddy's girls. Amen. Amen, Jeremiah. Uh-huh. Amen, Jeremiah. That's good, son. Thank the Lord. Amen. That's good. God's good, ain't he? Mm -mm -mm. All right. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. John chapter number two. John chapter number two. It does good to brag on the Lord. It is honoring to God, number one. And anything we do that brings glory and honor to God is a great thing. 
And it also helps you. And you'll be surprised how many other people that help here in you. Right. So it is a very, very uh, blessing to hear people testify for our Lord. Amen. The, the, there's a lot of good that comes out of it. Amen. Right. Never be ashamed to speak up for your Lord. Amen. John chapter number 2. It's many, many a time somebody's been sitting in a service and somebody has stand up and say something about the Lord being there and seeing them through things and someone is sitting there thinking, man, uh, that's the same God I got. Maybe going through a trial and it reminds them of who God is, amen. And I appreciate that, amen. I appreciate your mind the Lord when he squeezes your heart to stand up and say something, amen. It is never a bad time to brag on Jesus. John chapter number 2 Look in verse number 13. St. John. John, of course, the, as far as the timing of the writing, he's the last uh, book of the Gospels that was written. Of course, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see the insight that John has with a few of the other revelations that were later revealed through the Apostle Paul that God given, had given him, and so he writes with that slant with a little more understanding that's why when you read the book of John, it, it makes maybe a little bit more sense to you as a New Testament believer than maybe Matthew and Mark and Luke does. It's because the writer has the insight of the New Testament church to a little extent, and so he writes with that slant, which gives us a little more understanding, amen, of what's going on in our lives. Uh, the, the, that book of Matthew, of course, written to the, uh, the Lord as the king, and that's more of a slant towards Israel. He's, a, he's the king. He's our king of our lives, but he's our savior. And John writes to him in, in, in that light of him being the savior. And it's the same God in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He's no different. It's just the angle that you approach it and look at it. And that's, the way a lot of, that's the way it is in a lot of things. It's the, the way you look at it. And you might look at something and see it a little bit different than I will, and it might relate to you different than it does to me. And that's the way life is, amen. And, and that's, that's how it makes us unique. And we're not robots and we're not cookie cutters. We're, we're individuals that God has saved with your personality and, and your individuality. And God wants to use you how you are. Don't try to be nobody else. Be you, amen. And you'll never know who you can reach being you. Now, if being you is being in sin, then that needs to be corrected. But I'm talking about in your characteristic and personalities that God can use you for who you are, amen. John chapter number 2, anyhow, verse number 13, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. I would say God was pretty upset. He went into the place of Jewish worship, which the Bible said was the temple, and he found them in there selling animals. And we know in that Old Testament economy that the Jews were to bring their animals as sacrifices for their sins. And they had got a little traditional, got a little lax, got a little lazy, if you will. And instead of bringing an animal, they'd just show up, a few dollars, throw it in there and buy one, sacrifice it, get your sins covered and move along, amen. It ain't no different today. Practically, the people show up the same way. There's no preparation before meeting the Lord in a place of worship. Of course, it's not the temple. We call it the church, the meeting place where God's people meet in the New Testament church. Uh, but we show up with that same mentality where there's no praying ahead of time. There's no pre preparation. It, it's just show up, drop a few dollars in the plate, bless me if you can. And that is evil. And God feels the same way about that that he did this. Amen. It's, uh, your, your, your heart's not right. And I'm, I'm glad that you can come to the place of worship and not have the right attitude, not come the right way, and God can still change your life. The day I came to church, I did not come with the right mentality and the right reason, but thank God, God knew what he was doing. Thank God he can turn it around. But the Lord was upset in what was going on. Amen. The Bible said in verse number 16, And said unto them that sold doves, Take these hints, make not my father's house. 
you don't mind underlining your Bible, it would be a good phrase to underline or mark it, or if you're taking notes, verse 16, my father's house and house of merchandise. This was the temple. This was the place where God was worshipped in that Old Testament economy. It was considered my father's house. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. I mean, God was zealous about the place of worship. Uh, we read tonight, or Brother Tim read, and we listened, 1 Kings chapter number 8, when they were building the temple and the dedication of the temple. And you could go back up before that, and when Moses was traveling around with the children of Israel after they had left Egypt and headed to Canaan land, they, they had set up a, a tent, a tent of worship. And that, that tent was set up with, with certain things that were set up for worship, and it was made to uh, be a place where they can hear from God and God can speak to them and they can worship Lord, they can offer their sacrifices, they can get right with God. God had a place. And then he has established the temple. And now we look at it practically. We can look at these verses that are doctrinally for the temple, uh, how it applies to us in the church. God has a place where he wants his people to meet. And the meeting purposes of the worship God and a lot of other things. But he said that they had taken that meeting place, that temple, the place where God was to be honored and worshiped and sacrifices were to be made. They had made it a house of merchandise. They, they had started to ruin the place that God had set up to worship. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll look at this little thought tonight and hopefully it'll challenge all of our hearts. We'll leave here a little bit better than the way we come. Amen. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Amen. Brother Mike, how about lead us in prayer, brother? Yes, help us, Lord. We need you. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Amen. He said in verse number 16 again, And said unto them that sold doves, Take these hints, make not my father's house and house and mer uh, of merchandise. Amen. He said, Get it out of here. It's a sad day when God begins to run you away from the place that he had set up for it to be worshipped. Yeah, right. Amen. And, and it is sad today that that is still a, a doctrine that's not much applied to where right. there has to be judgment down at what we would call the house of God, yeah, right. the place of worship. Now, we know God's house, the, the church, could mean the body of believers or it could mean a local place or assembly when you study doctrinal words in the Bible, amen. But it's a sad day when God has to excommunicate some of his own people. Or God's people have to do the process of church discipline and remove people away from a place they're supposed to be to help them. Amen. I mean, sometimes you got to uh, uh, show people their sin that others might fear. You got to drive things away. You got to keep the wolves away. You got to keep the place of, of worship and the, the best we can as sinners where God can be honored. Amen. It wasn't honored the right way at my father's house, Jesus said. And he began to overthrow the tables, took a cord and ran them out. Now, now we've had to discipline people in the church before, but I ain't never had to beat nobody out with a cord. Amen. I thought about punching a couple of them in the face. And that is God's honest truth. Amen. I have got, you know, the preacher, the Bible said that man of God is not to be a brawler. Amen. That's where you kind of like get a good deacon that can fight, man. Let him take care of your business, I guess. Amen. You got to do what you got to do. Amen. We already established Wednesday night that we're looking for rich ones. Amen. And Brother D'Angelo fits the mold at the rich, and I believe he can brawl too. Amen. Just joking, but really, I have wanted to hit somebody, amen. <laughs> Some people get you in a, in a bad way, amen. I, I, I'm, I'm very particular. I think you ought to be protective. I believe as a father, you ought to take care of your own household. And sometimes you've got to get a little rough around the collar, let people know, hey, we ain't playing no games with my wife. We ain't playing no games with my youngins. We ain't putting up with some stuff, and we will have to uh, deal with it if we have to. And I believe the place of worship ought to be in that fashion, amen. We're not trying to amen. run nobody away. We're not trying to uh, uh, be some dictator. But, amen, I believe you ought to take care of what God's given you. You ought to keep things away that can cause harm. Amen. 
And the Lord drove them out. He overthrew the tables. He dumped the money. Their money didn't mean nothing to God. Matter of fact, amen, I believe that money is a part of, uh, of worship and it needs to be given so the work can be established and do what needs to be done. Hey, hey, but God can do it with somebody else if you won't do yours. And if it ain't right, amen, God said it, it doesn't matter anyhow. You're not going to get a reward for it. Now, it might be used to the work of God. And like somebody said, the devil's had it long enough and we can get something out of it, but it ain't going to help you none. Amen, if your heart ain't right and you're not doing right by God with it, amen, you're just throwing it away, amen. And God got upset of how his house was being done. Look at Matthew chapter number 21. Matthew chapter 21. There are two different instances where the Lord got upset at the temple and ran, ran them out. He rebuked them for what they had done to his father's house. Matthew chapter number 21. Look in verse number 12. Now, some stories in the Bible are told by different writers, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of the same account, same story. Some of them are, are different timings, amen. Amen. This is a different timing than the first. Matthew chapter number 21, look in verse number 12. The Bible said, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seed of them that sold doth. <laughs> he didn't come into another place and got upset again. It ain't right. You know what? You know what's a very, very ashamed when the Lord rebukes you once and he has to come do it again? Yeah, right. Like you didn't learn the first time? Right. Amen. Some people say it's thick. You know that? The Bible said, and, and look, verse 13, and here's the verse. And said unto them, it is written, look what he said, my house. Remember what he said over there in John chapter number 2, verse 16? He said, my what? Father's house. Jesus is the one that said it, and he's the one that said it here, and he said, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the Bible said, And the blind and the lame came into the temple, and he healed them. Amen. Hey, God help somebody if they want it. Right. The problem is some people are uh, too religious or too pharisaical to be helped, but God said, I'll take the lame, the blind, it doesn't matter to me. I can take something out and make something out of them. Yeah. And he healed them, and when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the, and the children crying in the temple, and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. You know what's amazing? They weren't upset about somebody selling doves. Yeah, right. They weren't upset about somebody making God's place of worship a den of thieves. But they were upset when worship was given to God in the temple. Right. It is a sad day when you care more about the place than you do the God of the place. Yeah. You ever get upset, man, uh, uh, about uh, you tearing up something in church? You know, I mean, you're going to take care of the things in the, in the house of God. You're not to tear up the pews and try to mess up the carpet, amen. Hey, but some people get more upset about you damaging the, the, the physical place more than you would than they would of you grieving the Spirit of God. Yeah, you're right. They got upset because he was being praised. And he said in verse 16, and, 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 and he said unto him, Hearest thou what they say? Jesus saith to them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Jesus said in verse number 13, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. You know what that makes Jesus Christ? Same thing we preached this morning. That makes him God. He said, My father's house. And then in Matthew 21, he said, My house. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is the Father. He's God. Amen. He said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and my Father are one, amen. Amen. He may, he, this is deity, the word meaning God and Christ being the same, amen. He was God manifest in the flesh. He said, my Father's house, you're destroying it. Not only my Father's house, you're destroying my house that shall be called the house of prayer. The place of prayer. Look in Matthew 23. Now throughout the ministry of our Lord, he is constantly trying to reach his Jewish people. John 1, 11, he came into his own, that being the Jewish people, and his own received him not. They rejected him. 
They wanted nothing to do with him. But the Bible says in verse 12, thank God, John 1, 12, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Hey, God, Israel was God's sheep. But what did he say? I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Yeah, right. Thank God. The middle wall of partition was yeah, broken right. down in, in Ephesians chapter number 2. And now God's saving Jew and Gentiles in one body. Right. Whether they be bond or free, amen. But he came to his own people. Right. He tried to reach them. He healed them. He reached out to them, Amen. Hey, but they constantly rejected him. Just as the principle goes, amen, in the Trinity of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, that Old Testament, God the Father was rejected, God the Son showed up, they rejected God the Son, the Holy Ghost came, God the Spirit, and they rejected the Holy Ghost. And we see this thing breaking out in the book of Acts, going to whosoever will, God's not just reaching out to the Jews that rejected him, God's saving anybody. Yeah, right. Jew or Gentile, and by the way, they're all saved the same way. Yeah. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. his death, his burial, and resurrection. So when he came to these Jews, when he went into the temple, we see that he said, hey, man, you're making my father's house a house of merchandise, a bunch of den of thieves. And he was so upset, he overturned the tables, ran them out with a cord. A little later, he comes in, and there he's, they're doing it again. He's upset again. He said, hey, hey, you're destroying my house. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. I'm supposed to be worshipped here. Showing that he was God. Matthew 23, look at verse number 38. Get out a thing. I wouldn't say progresses. We would say digresses. Degresses. He goes down. Verse 38 of Matthew 23. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. I set this thing up. As the Father is God, we being one, the temple was a place to be worshipped. You took it for granted. You made it your religious type of service without following the Bible ordinance that he had laid out for worship. He upset, he turned the tables over and run them out. Comes back, said, My father, this is my house, and look what you're doing to it. And they brought in the lame and the blind and he healed them and they were worshiping him the way he should have been worshiped, but they didn't get it. They were upset he was being worshiped. They was upset he called it his house. They were upset before him when he said it was my father's house. The place of prayer. Now the Lord said, Behold, your house. It went from my father's house to my house. Now it's your house. That's the temple. But you know, it ain't no different today in local assemblies of worship. The spiritual truth still the same. My father's house. Man, this place of worshiping God the Father. My, my father, my, my, uh, the son's house, which is the same. We're worshiping him, a house of prayer. But when you begin to uh, usher God out the door, and he's on the outside knocking spiritually, and he's not worshiping the way he should, you made it your house. What's he going to do when you make it your house? He said, your house is left unto you desolate. Yeah, right. Well, what is it? You ain't got nothing but a social gathering. Yeah. As far as God's concerned, listen, I know this ain't going to sound cliche or maybe a word in you like, but as far as God's concerned, it ain't no different than the ball house yeah. or the whole house. God ain't worshiped there. God ain't honored there. Oh, but it's religious. You know what? Matter of fact, it's probably more wicked. Because you're calling to be something spiritual, and everybody knows the bar ain't right. Everybody knows the dope house ain't right. But God's house ought not to be like that. But you made it your house. You do it your way. What about God's way? Look in chapter 24 in verse number 1. How does it happen? What, what happens? It becomes your house, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. You know what he did? He left the house. The temple. This come your house. He left. He walked out physically. But you know what? He not only walked out physically, he walked out spiritually. Do it how you want to do it. 
He left the temple. The temple was their place of worship. Ours is not the temple. It's local churches, meeting houses, places that God is to be honored, places that are supposed to be God's house of prayer. Well, God's honored and God's worship and, and, and God's uh, true praise and worship is given into him. Right. But you know what happens? When you start making it your house, God will walk out. Yeah. You, you know what the church is? Yeah, the church. I'm using this doctrinal truth about the temple as a practical truth of our place of worship. Do you know what the church is for? The church is for worship. The church is to come in together as God's people. When two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. It's to give honor and reverence and praise and worship to God Almighty. In song, in preaching, in worship, in praise, in testimony. God's place. It's, it's a place of instruction. You go in and you're given instruction. What did the Lord do when he went into the temple in his day? And he opened up the scroll of Isaiah and he said, This day is this scripture fulfilled in thine ears. You know what he's doing? He was instructing them. Mm -hmm. You know the place of worship what to do? It ought to instruct you. Right. You ought to be given some information on how to live your life and how to please the Lord. Yeah. No instructions given, you just showing up and what in the world happened today? Yeah, I don't want to listen to a preacher where I gotta to try to figure out what he's saying. Yeah. Just say what you're saying and mean what you're saying. Make sure it's in the book. Right. Don't leave me scratching my head. What is he talking about today? Yeah. Make it plain. It's a place of what he said over there in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. It's a place of reproving, rebuking, and exhortation. Yeah, that's right. It's what to go down, down at God's place. It's a place... The meeting place is a place where the lifeline can be thrown out to some weary soul. Yeah, that's right. Like somebody throwing over a life preserver over a boat to somebody that's drowning. Mm -hmm. Hey, the life preserver ought to be thrown out in a church. Yeah, right. No, we done this morning preaching the word of God. Throwing out the lifeline to some weary sinner that's lost that they can be brought into the fold. Right. We're throwing it out. You're going under and you need to get some help. You know what the problem is a lot of times? I just swim a little bit longer. Yeah. I'll try to get out of here another way. No, you better take the life preserver, which is Jesus Christ, and be pulled in. Yeah, yeah. Well, the current's going to take you under. Right. It's where the lifeline's thrown out to weary sinners that are lost. It's thrown out to weary saints that are struggling. It's walked away from God. It's maybe went AWOL, if you will. It's jumped overboard trying to make it in the world that they couldn't make it in to start with. Ain't that a no brainer? You couldn't make it out there when you were lost. Why do you think you're going to make it out if you go back? It ain't going to get no better. Matter of fact, it'll get worse if you say. Because when you was out there doing it the first time, you was out there with your flesh and you was living in your sin. Hey, but when you go out there when you're saved, the Holy Ghost is inside of you. It's going to be one miserable state out there. Grieving the Holy Ghost and quenching Him. Man, it'll be a miserable life. Matter of fact, if it ain't miserable, yeah. by the evidence of the scripture, you probably never knew God. Yeah, right, right. If you can jump overboard and go back to the world after you said, I got saved, a lot of people never got saved, they got religious yeah. or they got in church, yeah. never got born again. And that's why when they go back to the world, listen, anybody in here can go back to the world right. from here to there. Right. Now, does it matter? Hey, man, hey, hey, you're one mistake. One choice, one, one action, one step from ruining your testimony and going under. Yeah, right. That's how it can happen. So don't get your halo off and, and we're not trying to beat anybody down that's going astray. I'm just saying the, the principle is and the point is if you can go away and there's no conviction and there's no regret and there's no, and there's no uh, uh, misery, <laughs> Man, I don't know how the Holy Ghost can be in you and be comfortable. Yeah, right. That ain't biblical. Right. You probably went out from among us because you never were others. Yeah, right. right? It's one of those kind of things. But some people do. And it's a place to throw the church. It's a place to throw out the lifeline. 
It's a place where you can grow in grace. It's a place where you can get some help. Boy, ain't you ever, you ain't you ever had some help at church? Yeah, right. Amen. Thank God for help that's been given out at church. Thank God for we can grow in grace. I, it, I love, I love watching God's children grow spiritually. I like watching you, you children and stages of your Christianity and growing in the, in the Lord and, and how God uses your life and begins to mold and shape your life. That's exciting. I hope it's exciting to you, man. I, I like that, amen. God, it's a place where God's people can grow. We're to grow. We're not always to stay babes that are carnal. You know, we become young men and young women and elders and grow up in the church, amen. There's a growth process as Christians, amen. And church is a good place where you can get that growth, amen. It's a place, according to the word of God, where we send out missions around the world. And just like they did in the early church in the book of Acts, amen. They prayed about them and sent them out. It's where they're supported from, amen. Hey, I'm talking about the place of worship. You know what's sad? That when the church... The meeting place is no longer what God intended it to be. When, you, when it becomes your place. Yeah, I, you know, we make the saying all the time, well, that's my church. And I understand the stay, statement behind it. That's where I go. That's where I attend. This Hopewell Independent Baptist Church, that's my church. Not, not mine. I don't own it. Not mine because I'm the pastor. No, it's just my, that's where I go. Amen. Amen. Uh, but, but it ain't mine, right. it ain't yours, it's God's. Yeah, right. God just allowed us to meet together as believers and join up together and worship the Lord here. He's the one that's to be magnified. Yeah, He's the one that's to be honored. Yeah. Hey, the preaching and the singing ought not to be about the preaching, ought not to be about the preacher, and the singing ought not to be about the singer, and the worship ought not to be about the worshiper. It all ought to be about the God that we're singing and preaching and worshiping to. Amen. Yeah, right. It's God's house. God's place of worship. But you know what's happened? A lot of people's made it their house. You know what happens when it becomes your house? You know what you, know what you do? You begin to sing your songs. Do you know how a lot of places of worship sing the songs that they sing? And I believe the old time religion. And we, don't believe no, we don't need no contemporary garbage. We don't need, there's no such thing as Christian rock. They don't go together. It's like oil and water don't mix, you know. There's no Christian rap and Christian country. It don't happen like that, amen. You know what happens when you start ushering that stuff in? It becomes your house. And when it's your house, you sing your songs. It's no longer seeking God. It's no longer wanting what God wants. Hey, hey, we, we not, now, you not only begin to sing your songs, you begin to preach your sermons. Yeah, that's right. Because it's your house. Right. So we'll preach our sermons. Mm -hmm. We'll sing our songs. Hey, when it becomes your house, you start using your scriptures. Yeah. Right. No longer that King James Bible anymore. It's the one you choose. Well, I believe in the New King James, and I believe in the uh, Good News for Modern Men, and, and I believe in the, uh, 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 the other garbage. It filled my mind up with all that junk, amen. Hey, you know what? It's your house. And that's why these places, they got their books, their scriptures, their songs, their sermons. It's their house. And if you don't think that it's not, try them. It's theirs. They have their spirit. It's no longer God's spirit. It's a sad day when the Holy Ghost of God don't have liberty in his place of worship. Grieving the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God ain't right. Hey, here's another one. They have their Savior. Their six-letter Savior. We have a seven-letter Savior. That King James Bible spelled it right. Amen. He's not the S-A-V-O-R. Amen. Savior, Savior. He's our Savior. Amen. Amen. He's, he's, he's the one we worship. Amen. He, he, he's, he's the one of this book. But it's your house. But he said, my father's house should be called a house of prayer. Do you know what prayer shows? My house, that's what he said, shall be called a house of prayer. Why do he say that? Because that's what it is, number one. 
But you know what prayer shows? It shows dependence on him. Who do you pray? Why do you pray? Because he's going to have to do it. Right? But when it's your house, there's no need to pray because you got it. Right? You can do it. You can preach it, and you can teach your own Sunday school class. You can sing your own song. You can play your own instrumental. Hey, you can do your own praise and worship. Why? Because you don't need God. Why are we going to ask him for help? We got it. It's a sad day when you think you got it. Amen. Prayer shows dependence on the Lord. Prayer shows, listen, that you cannot do it on your own. They were no longer making it a house of prayer. They had figured out a way to do it on their own. Do you know if we're not careful, we can figure out how to do it without God? No saying is fake it till you make it. You just kind of going through the motions, and man, we saying the prayer and reading the scripture and singing the song, and it becomes routine. If you're not careful, you're getting that rut and it's your house, your way, and no spirit. Well, no Holy Spirit. They're going to be a spirit. It might be an unclean one, and it might be yours. But it might be the devil's, but that, there'll be something. But the Lord was upset about it. We cannot do it without the Lord. The house... Is God's house. But you know, you could take that thing on another angle and look at it not only as the place of worship, the house of God, that no longer is the Father's or the Son's, it's yours and you're doing it your way, but the Bible also talks about your, ta your temple being a house. This is the house of the Holy Ghost. Do you know what? You know who I belong to? I belong to God. Who I belong to? I belong to Jesus Christ, which is God. But you know what? If I'm not careful, I can begin to do it my way. Hey, this when you get this kind of attitude. Well, it's my life. I'll do what I want to. It's my body. It's, it's my, my choices. You, you know what you forgot? Just like God set up a place of worship, we called it his and it ain't yours. When God saves you, you were bought with a price. Yeah, right. Now glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is... God's. You belong to him. Yeah, right. This is the Father's tabernacle. He's dwelling in here. Yeah, right. Who? In, in the person of Jesus Christ. God in me, the hope of glory. Yeah, right. Christ in me. Amen. Hey, but you know, if I'm not careful, I'll start to say, hey, God, I understand you're in there, but hey, we're going to do it my way. Yeah, right. Now, it's your house. What are you doing in your house? Do you know what your house does? Individually now. Your house helps make up this house. And it's sad when you get some in this house that are no longer using this house for God but for themselves. And that's where you get what the Bible calls divisions, schisms, disgruntled believers within the house of worship that don't like the way you're doing it. Because they don't like it. Because you're doing it your way. You know what we need to be careful? We need to be careful in this house and in this house and letting God have the preeminence in our lives and the worship that's due to him. Amen. Never, never come to the point where you begin to run your own life without God. Never come to the point where we begin to use God's place of worship for our benefit to do what we want to do. God said, my house is the house of prayer. You know who we need? We need God. That's why it's the house of prayer. You know what I need in this? I need God. Prayer shows my dependence to him. And without the Lord, we can do nothing. Amen. Amen. Be careful not allowing the, this place of worship to become ours and not his. Well, he's, he leaves it desolate and leaves. Do, do you know, if there's anything ever come out of this place of worship, it's because of God. 
And God, of course, used you and others and individuals to help make it up. But it was God that used these vessels to help make it. And he did always deserves all the praise and honor. If you ever invite somebody to church, you place a worship, say, come ahead and see what my God's doing out at our church that God's allowed us to worship in. He's a mighty God. You know, what, you, know what, you, know what, you know what they said over there when them boys began to carry that, that boy forward to Jesus Christ? They said it was noise that God was in the house. Do you know what needs to be noise? God's in the house. God's in this house also. Allow the Lord to have his way in your house. Amen. Let's do something tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's gather on the altar if we can. It is a house of prayer, right?